Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. So, yeah, Little Golden Book has a lot of books and they keep adding more over time. But it always seems interesting to see the licensed ones. So we go from a series that I don't really remember to a series that, of course, I remember. And I remember too. It was one of my favorite shows. So today we are looking at Rainbow Bright and the Brook Meadow Deer by Sarah Leslie, illustrated by Roy Wilson. A nice cute cover. It's Rainbow Bright leaning over with a very colorful set of flowers and holding one out to a deer who's smiling. Well, you know, it's a Rainbow Bright book. It has to be colorful except for places where we get to all the color having been taken. And without even having looked at this book, I want to swear that I have a record version of this. Because I don't know if you remember those books that came with records and you kind of listened and read along. Oh, you mean the really cheap plastic records that wore out really easily? Maybe in your household. <laughs> yeah, she has a magic touch. Anything she owns, archaeologists in the future are going to find it in pristine condition. Not quite, because I'm sure someone will inherit them and then they'll just be destroyed. <laughs> But if I do happen to uh, obtain my record case at some point, I will verify that. Hopefully it survived being at my parents. But now on to Rainbow Bright and the Brook Meadow Deer, the hardcover version, vinyl not included. Rainbow Bright is a lovable little girl who brings color and happiness to the world. She lives at the very end of the rainbow in a wonderful place called Rainbow Land. Oh, wow, there's pink everywhere in the bottom left hand corner of this illustration. Also, there's two colors of pink in the rainbow. That's not a very good rainbow. And, you know, Rainbow Bright's outfit has red in it, so it's not like they aren't using red, but any Rainbow Bright book is going to stress the color palette of printers at the time. Yeah, but it's very well illustrated. Looks exactly like the show from my memory. Ah, uh, Hallmark, you do such terrible things with your license nowadays. They have never made a good reboot to the series. I almost want Hasbro to buy Rainbow Bright so we can at least get a decent rendition of it. I mean, they just bought Power Rangers. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. One day, Rainbow and her helpers, the Color Kids, were tending to chores around the Color Castle where they live. They had been very busy making things on Earth as bright and cheery as possible. But, said Rainbow, we have to take time to clean house. I always remember not liking the blue one there too much. Can't remember why. But I really like her design. Lala Orange. Yeah. It, it has like, the best way I can describe it is a combination between a hipster painter and what people usually thought of the future people back then. You know, really big shoulder blades, multiple colors, very futuristic. Well, most of them have that shoulder pad design. Her, Rainbow, Patty. Not so much Canary Yellow, because she had more kind of a, almost a wing thing going on with her shoulder pads. Also, a nice little detail there that Patty has a Band-Aid on her leg. Hmm. Was she one of the very active? They were all pretty active. I mean, it takes a lot of work to keep all the color going in the world. Hmm. Yeah, also, a lot of color. Because you have Rainbow and three of the color kids all on one panel. And so the background's yellow. They had to pick a color of a color kid who was not present. Buddy Blue was sweeping the floor. Lala Orange was dusting the furniture. And Patio Green was washing the dishes. When they had finished, the color kids headed off to Rainbow Falls to see their friends, the Sprites. What was the name of the green girl again? Patty. Uh, the full name. Patio Green. Irish. Is that what they were going for? Because that sounds very Irish. Probably. Actually, if you were going to do a reboot, I don't, I don't know if that would be, like, kind of stressing the stereotypicalness, but it'd be fun to make her Irish. Well, it would be stressing it one way th with the focus on green, but if you made it Red Butler instead, then you'd be focusing on the red-headed aspect of the commonly depicted Irish person. Also, that name you just said, it refers to him, right? Yep. He was one of my favorites as well. Well, that's the thing. It's like, why would anyone like Buddy Blue when, you know, Red Butler had a cape? Come on, we were kids. We were susceptible to that sort of thing. Ah. Because he, he looks a little bit like Bo from She-Ra. Ah! 
Yes, yes he does. Mm -hmm. Though in the current illustration, we can only see the back of him. I'm sure we get to see all of them not running away from us towards Rainbow Falls. The color kids found some of the sprites mining color crystals. Other sprites were busy making the crystals into star sprinkles. There were piles of blue star sprinkles. There were piles of green star sprinkles. There were star sprinkles for every color in the rainbow. Speaking of which, they're all present on this page. I believe, let's see, we have red, green, blue, yellow, orange. Well, if you included the color kids, I think you have all the colors there. Well, they're working on a violet stone. They just don't have any violet sprinkles yet. Hmm. She was another one of my favorites, the violet. Mm-hmm. Shy Violet thought the violet star sprinkles needed a touch more violet. Red Butler thought the red star sprinkles were just the right shade of red. Patio Green was busy counting her piles of green star sprinkles just to make sure there were plenty. I always want to be ready for any emergency, said Patty. I also know vaguely remember Rainbow Bright like has some of each of these in a pouch she carries. Because the color kids are just the assistants. Also, there's a nice frog in that picture. Or a toad, but I'm pretty sure it's a frog. Well, he's been hanging around the whole time. Oh, I see. Did they all do the whole classic thing with animals being associated with them? Rainbow Bright had a horse. Anything else was irrelevant. Uh, Starlight, correct? Yes. The most beautiful horse in all the land, according to himself. Uh, speaking of which... Meanwhile, Rainbow Bright's magic horse, Starlight, was flying happily in the sky, watching over Rainbow Land. Then Starlight swooped down in a graceful arc over Earth. He flew low over the treetops for a better view. How odd, he thought, seeing the curling leaves and the thin trickle of the brook below. Things look dull here. Brown and dry. I don't remember him being able to fly except riding on a rainbow. I could have sworn that they always got in trouble when something happened to the rainbow and they fell. Also, those are some very nice illustrations. It does really emphasize, like... The left-hand side is very colorful, and then we switch over, and the only thing that really stands out on the right-hand side is starlight. Then he heard a soft sobbing sound. Someone was crying. Starlight saw two deer. But Mommy, you said there would be nice green grass here, said the fawn. I thought there would be, dear. I was sure there would be something to eat in Brook Meadow, but the meadow isn't green anymore. Ooh, check out the rib count on the mother. Oh, I didn't actually see that from the angle I was. Thank you for pointing it out. And Starlight looks very concerned. He is a very nicely rendered horse. Also, he gives Rainbow Dash a run for her money. No wings, though. That would be an interesting crossover. Rainbow Bright with My Little Pony. Hmm. Conversations Starlight and Rainbow Dash would probably get into. Oy, their egos. <laughs> then Starlight saw that the meadow wasn't green anymore. It was brown. The grass was all dry and parched. The leaves had lost their green color. Starlight saw how thin the deer were. The small fawn was nibbling at the bark of a tree. This is bitter, Starlight heard her say. Wow, they really cranked down the saturation for these pages and went for very muted browns. Everything except for Starlight is lots of muted browns. You can see some green in the background in some areas, but... It's more to, like, frame and emphasize the brown of the images. It's kind of like any Poco post-apocalyptic game nowadays. Except Splatoon. Any Nintendo game, pretty much. It can actually probably tra trace all of them back to some type of weird post-apocalyptic thing. <laughs> I mean, even Zelda. This is a post-apocalyptic world. Wow, it's so colorful. I'd better get Rainbow Bright, thought Starlight. This place needs star sprinkles to make it green again. And it needs them fast. Otherwise, the deer will starve. Starlight whinnied, calling Rainbow's name. You're her transportation. How's she supposed to get there? Also, I know star sprinkles are magic, but I bet water would work wonders, too. I was just about to say that. Like, wouldn't water work better? I know it wouldn't be as quick and as efficient as a magical MacGuffin, but... But she can haul around a bunch of star sprinkles. A lot harder to haul around 40 tons of water. Hmm... Rainbow Bright was pulling weeds in her garden when she heard Starlight calling her through the buckle on her magic belt. 
Rainbow touched the power star on the buckle, and Starlight swooped down out of the sky. That's convenient. Yeah, but I remember her touching the buckle and it being another magical MacGuffin. Yeah, I also remember, like, rainbows would come out of it, or she'd toss star sprinkles and there'd be rainbows or something. It's been a while since I've watched the actual show, but I remember a lot of little things, like how dark and dreary the... Would you call it a pilot? I would, and that's honestly what I've seen most recently, because I have it on VHS recorded off of television somewhere. Wow. Back when she was just known as Wisp, and Starlight was all white. Hmm. Quick, Rainbow, said Starlight. There's some deer on Earth who need our help. Brook Meadow has turned brown and the deer are hungry. Patty O'Green will have to come with us. Patty isn't back yet from Rainbow Falls, said Rainbow Bright. Go get her, Starlight. Hurry. Wouldn't it be more efficient to run on his back there so you can both, like, get on? Because I remember that horse carrying more than one. Starlight is perfectly capable of carrying double. So wouldn't it be easier for both of them to go pick up Patty and then go to the meadow? But then we don't get to see Patty riding Starlight all by herself. Yeah, I was just about to state that. Without wasting a moment, Starlight flew into the air and disappeared. In a couple of seconds, he was back with Patio Green. Patty was carrying a big supply of green star sprinkles. I hope this will be enough to color the meadow, she said. Isn't like the entire outro Rainbow Bright riding Starlight on a rainbow? I was also thinking like it would be funny. It's like, oh, I got these nice star sprinkles. All the grass is green now, but it's still inedible. It's just brighter. <laughs> Apparently, we should not be the ones doing the Rainbow Bright reboot. Oh, but we would be the best at it. There was no time to waste. Rainbow jumped up on Starlight's back, and off they flew into the sky. As they circled the meadow, Rainbow Bright saw how brown and parched the grass and trees were. I see what you mean, Starlight, she said. The deer really do need our help. Let's get to work, Patty. Rainbow and Patty quickly poured the green star sprinkles over every tree and bush and blade of grass. In a flash, everything was green, and the deer began to eat their fill. Hmm. Just thought of another problem. If the deer had been starving for a while and they eat too much, they could actually eat, eat themselves to death. Yeah, they have to be careful because they could founder. We are so dark. Sorry. How can we thank you, called the deer to Rainbow, Patty, and Starlight. You don't have to thank us, yelled Rainbow Bright. It's our job. We were more than happy to help. And off the smiling trio flew, back to Rainbow Land. Hmm. Well, that was a cute, fun little story. Just because we found issues with it doesn't make it any less fun. And I'm sure if we went back and watched the series, we could nitpick the series just as badly. Because, you know, even as kids, there were moments where I was like, but... Um, I excuse me? <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the two, well, one's the pilot and one's a movie, but yeah. We, the series was just plain fluff. It was fun fluff, but it was just plain fluff. The movies, on the other hand, is where things got really serious. Carving up an entire star? Apparently the prison that all light goes through? Oh, wow. And do you remember the little boy on Earth that um, she had, would be in contact with? Oh, uh, the one who walked through the rainbow and ended up with a purple star on his cheek? Yeah. I didn't remember the purple star. I just remember him having a key where he could open up a door and go to Rainbow Land anytime he wanted. But it was supposed to be reserved for emergencies. So, what did you think? Huh, about what I remembered. I, I wish we could get a good reboot of this show. Because modern writing styles, as opposed to the 80s type of writing styles, could do so much with this. Like any of the teams in the currently that I currently see doing shows right now, except for a couple of reboots I haven't watched, at least not more than one episode or the trailer of, Cough, Teen Titans Go, Cough, Thundercats Roar, could take Rainbow Bright and run with it and go awesome. But the two reboots I have seen of Rainbow Bright is just painful. The most recent one is the best so far I've seen. <laughs> But it has issues. Like, I see where you were trying to go with this. I'm guessing Hallmark was holding you back. Probably. Because it's interesting what licenses Hallmark has. Yeah, I didn't realize Hallmark 
had the license for Rainbow Bright. I was like, I thought it was someone else. I was thinking it was like Warner Brothers or something. But then, but then you told me like, oh no, it's Hallmark. I'm like, oh, this explains so much. They're a greeting card company. They don't know how to run a show. But who was running the show back when it was on TV when I was younger? No, we'd have to go look at the movie and see. Or just Wikipedia it. Because, you know, almost everything's on the internet. Yeah, I'm surprised it doesn't say anywhere in the copyrights. Uh, oh, it uh, says Hallmark. Hallmark. Wow, apparently people who were running Hallmark back, back then knew better what to do with this show than the people now. Yeah, I was going to say, I was pretty sure it was Hallmark back then, but... You never know, because licenses can change around so much. I know, but that's the thing. They've had it all the time, and they just keep clinging to it, even though they don't do anything good with it. But, you know, unlike some other licenses that people hold on to, Firefly, Cough, Firefly, uh, there isn't a simple workaround. Firefly meet Rainbow Dash. Yeah, I was just about to clarify. She's not talking about the TV show Firefly. She's talking about the character Firefly. I had to clarify that because a bunch of geeks out there went, what? <laughs> yeah, well, this channel is still predominantly pony, so I thought I would be understood. But thank you for clarifying, Lex. You're welcome. So this has been Rainbow Bright and the Brook Meadow Deer by Sarah Leslie, illustrated by Roy Wilson, part of the Little Golden Book series. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, comment, other videos. I mean, at this point, there should be a whole Little Golden Book playlist. Not to mention that the two-minute bedtime story book is complete, so that is a complete playlist for your listening pleasure. Want to find a copy of this book? We'll try to put an Amazon link in for you. Just want to go shopping? Yeah, I know it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with books, but hey, Ebates link. My show and I'll do what I want within reason. Links below. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you for listening.